After a very long wait, Arms Against Tyranny for Hearts of Iron 4 is finally here, and whilst everybody's playing Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Iceland, Norway for that juicy new national focuses and flavor, you're not doing that, are you? In fact, the first thing you did was search for Hearts of Iron 4 Germany guide on YouTube. I find that a little bit suspicious. Are you not interested in all of those juicy northern mission trees? Does it not appeal to you? Or are you one of those guys that just, no matter what the patch, always plays Germany? Is that what's going on here? And if that is what's going on, why? Why do you always play Germany? But hey, you know what? I also always play Germany no matter what the patch. In fact, since Paradox granted me early access, I've pretty much spent the past week plus only refining my Germany strategy so that no matter what buffs the allies get, no matter what buffs the northern countries get, I will make sure that Germany is triumphant, okay? And yes, I just spat on my microphone, but it doesn't matter. That's besides the point. Let's get to it and make Germany great again, all right? In in this game only. It's it's just a game. It, calm down, okay? It's just a game. First thing we're going to do is we're going to be arranging our army. We have 24 starting infantry divisions. We're going to keep these in our main army group here. And we're going to assign as their general, Mr. Erwin von Witzleben, who is uh, a pretty decent infantry general overall. The rest, six of these, we're just going to keep right now in one army group. We're going to change these around as we go in the campaign. With the Arms Against Tyranny DLC, a lot of changes have affected most of the Nordic countries and even the allies to a certain extent and I don't want to be that guy but Germany did kind of get a nerf indirectly by everybody around them getting buffed so we have to make do with what we have and we have to use the new mechanics that were added such as the international market that I'm going to explain in a moment to get a little bit ahead of everybody else or at least keep up with everybody else that got buffs in this uh, new DLC. For now we're going to be pressing the G key and merging all of our ships over in Wilhelmshaven same for the yes. Uh, Submarines. We're gonna assign Mr. Carl Donuts in charge of the submarines and we're gonna assign Eric Schrader in charge of the uh, real fleet. For the planes I'm gonna be disbanding every single one of these that we have right now and I'm gonna assign a new air wing over in uh, Berlin with uh, three fighter plane wings and in the southern bits we're gonna do the same but it's going to be a four bomber air wings. Make sure we press K so all of these uh, air wings here get some training done that I actually not do my fighters I think I didn't. <laughs> okay there you go we got all of the planes done. Next up when it comes to our research we're gonna get basic machine tools together with the construction one as our first two and then of course uh, electronical mechanical engineering. The the fourth one we're leaving open so we get an extra 30 days reduction to our research. What I mean by this is essentially that we can use the fourth slot to lower 30 days of research for one of the other researches that we already started doing. This is a little bit of a cheese that hasn't been patched. In fact, I think it's pretty much a feature at this point in the game. Take note, you can only make use of it once per technology, so keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to national focuses, we're going to be doing the Rhineland and then afterwards, we're we're going to be working down our four-year plan to get the extra research eventually by doing autarky and the uh, KDF and Göring worker. We're also going to be building infrastructure in Saxony and Mosland, and we're going to be queuing up civilian factories afterwards in both of these. The reason we're doing infrastructure first is because having 100% infrastructure or level 5 infrastructure means that we get two times bonus to building anything in those particular states. So if you hover over this right here, it shows that right now state infrastructure is at times 1.8, meaning we're essentially getting an 80% bonus to building speed because it is a level 4 infrastructure. So always upgrade to maximum infrastructure before you build up in whatever state. An added bonus is that whenever you increase the infrastructure, you also get more resources in that state if the state is producing any resources. We also want to avoid building infrastructure in Hanover, Brandenburg, Thun and Franken because the Reis Autobahn national focus is going to max out the infrastructure in those four states so it's pointless uh, wasting our IC building that when we get it for free. If you want to see the full early queue for the uh, construction screen here I'm going to max out the Mosul and the factories so that's going to be seven civilian factories then I'm going to be increasing the infrastructure in the Rhineland and then after that's increased we max out this also with 
civilian factories and then we're gonna do the same with the uh, Ober Bayern in the south max it out with civilian factories let's make sure we get Gerd von Rundstedt as our uh, field marshal here and assign any general for the time being now we will have two separate units of infantry divisions that we're gonna place over here we're gonna assign for these units Mr. Johan Blaskowitz the reason we're assigning this guy is because he actually has the infantry officer trait so he's gonna be gaining experience towards that particular trait a lot faster and we're gonna be sending him over as volunteer to the Ethiopians these two units are gonna provide a little bit of army experience not too much but better than nothing and the main volunteers are gonna be sent over to Spain which is why we're gonna be recruiting some cavalry divisions we need more cavalry divisions so we're able to send more volunteers to the Spanish theater when it happens usually around four to five volunteer divisions will be able to uh, be shipped off to Spain since the Civil War starts around July if I'm not mistaken that means that we're gonna be just spamming these units whenever they're uh, at the minimum amount ready to be deployed we're gonna set this with high equipment priority and speaking of let's make a duplicate of the infantry divisions give these guys a proper German name like a uh, volunteer Stein, which is a totally German name assign the elite rank to this particular division this means that these guys are gonna receive equipment as a priority compared to other units and we're gonna make uh, these two units here volunteer and Stein so they're gonna be fighting as volunteers in other theaters when it comes to our production we're gonna be deleting the uh, light tanks we're gonna be deleting the tactical bombers and the close air support now that might seem a little bit controversial but bear with me we're gonna get the uh, close air support we're gonna get tanks we're just not gonna use the light tanks we're gonna just rush for medium tanks and by the start of the war hopefully have a few medium tank divisions that we can use we're also going to uh, build a towed anti-air line and we're gonna use the Rheinmetall as our military industrial complex uh, we're also getting 15 infantry equipment lines three support equipment three towed artillery and the rest of this just go into uh, the uh, BF 109 we do have a shortage of rubber now so we're going to be importing rubber from a nation that hopefully is going to be our ally in the future, namely CM. We're also going to stop importing steel from the Yes Swede since we don't need the steel for the time being. And going back to the production queue, we're going to make sure that we only produce one of these obsolete submarines and one of these uh, destroyers, of course. I'm not deleting these because they're there and we've already got a little bit of IC invested in building uh, these uh, ships, so we might as well finish them off. Now, to explain the uh, international market, which was added with the arms against tyranny dlc you have the ability to buy equipment that other nations list on the international market or you can sell equipment by adding equipment to market and then based on what equipment you sell and how much of it you sell you get in exchange economic capacity i have to say that the international market is a really great addition to the game i feel like it's going to change the balance of the game completely in a good way it's going to give the chance for smaller nations to catch up with bigger nations especially in multiple player it's going to be a massive game changer now in order to get nations uh, to trade with you need to have your market access with them so you can negotiate market access at the start of the campaign that's primarily done with the fascist nations you can also automatically do that you go over here to market options and you keep this by default auto send and auto accept negotiate market access you can also auto accept purchase requests so whenever you're selling equipment and somebody wants to uh, buy it you automatically let them buy it from you now I like to see who's buying equipment from me and that's why I'm not doing this automatically but if you don't want to have to deal with that pop-up you can always do that of course and our two divisions have arrived in Ethiopia let's make sure we uh, send them to wherever the fighting is gonna be most intense the main goal in this particular engagement is to just get as much army tradition as we can get and of course level up our general Blaskowitz take note whenever you're sending generals as uh, volunteers you want to send somebody that has less traits because then they will gain traits a lot faster and you can also grind specific traits based on the terrain so for example if we send our armies to fight in the north they're gonna get mountaineer a lot faster since these are mountains and if you send them in the south they're gonna get uh desert fox because these are deserts in here actually you know what i'm gonna change my mind i'm gonna send them in the north because i'm gonna need mountaineers more than i'm gonna need uh desert foxes you can also use the strategic redeployment to redeploy units faster to the front line so you don't have to wait for too long take note that does mean it's going to crush their organization so they're gonna need some time to 
recover that organization after they get to the front line. All right, so we got 30 extra days of research and we wanna change this with basic machine tools. The way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go to basic machine tools and we're gonna replace this with any other research. So I'm gonna replace it with the MG08 and we're also gonna use the Mauser Military Industrial Complex with the new changes to uh, how the uh, military industrial complexes work. When you select any industrial complex to research something, not only is it gonna give you the bonus to research, but that specific uh, organization is going to get traits. So the way this works is by researching with that specific organization or by producing items with that specific organization, you get funds and once the fund reaches a certain amount, in this case 800, you get a trait and then you use said trait to upgrade that organization. Every organization has different upgrades so they provide different bonuses once enacted and once you reach level five or better yet once you have size five organizations you can choose a policy each policy can give different stuff like funds again plus 10 percent resources needed minus 10 percent when producing items with that specific organization reliability plus 10 percent or research bonus plus 20 percent when researching technology with that particular military industrial complex or organization so now let's continue this. Let's select uh, the basic machine tools. And as you can see, it's down to 90 days now. So we made a massive change there. We saved a ton of time in the process. So also not forget to assign a field marshal over here since we want our field marshal to gain a little bit of experience too, right? One more thing to uh, increase the reinforcement priority for our volunteers is we can go to our options or settings and make sure we have high priority here. It's not much, but it should help a tiny little bit at least. We can also start creating our intelligence agency I recommend you do this around early to mid 1936 we want to do it so we can actually get three collaboration governments done in France prior to the collapse of France so we can cheese it a little bit and we can uh, do that old established German France I'm also going to be assigning my uh, main army here to the border with the Austrians and let's set up a secondary army we're going to make these guys garrison the entirety of Germany what I'm doing right now makes no difference it's literally just me doing this because I like doing it you could also just draw Draw a line and make sure your units go on that fallback line. That's what most people do, I've noticed. Let's keep on spawning these bad boys here and attaching them to this army group. Now that Rhineland was completed, we have political power available. So we're going to be switching from limited exports to free trade as our trade policy. The main benefit of this is that we get 15% construction speed, research speed plus 10%, factory and dockyard output. The drawback is that we are going to be spending a lot more of our resources on the market, meaning that we're going to be lacking certain resources wait did this actually refresh one day there you go now it's refreshed that means we have to import tungsten and i strongly recommend you do that from the swedes since sweden has a ton of tungsten and we are also going to be lacking chromium but that's fine we don't need to care about the chromium it's only being used in the construction of the two battleships now between you and me guys i don't really care about these battleships i personally i will just delete these two i'm gonna keep the other ones of course because all of these are easy to build and they only require steel the battleships were the problem because we're not going to have a proper fleet. We're only going to be spamming submarines. Speaking of which, this is what our submarine design is going to look like right now. Torpedo 2, Engine 2, and Save. There you go. Type 7. Use the Bone and Voss military organization. And we're going to just make as many of these as possible. Of course, do this also so we finish the uh, queue that we already have a little bit faster. And that's it. We're likely going to build some more convoys too along the line but no actual ships to speak of what the f is going on here <laughs> the ethiopians have actually reached the the port in uh, kismayo bruh the italians are not doing good are they they're going full on historical i guess as our second national focus we could do the four-year plan but i really want to get construction three faster and i want to use the 100 uh, percent research bonus that you get from doing four-year plan for my construction three that means i need to start construction two before I research construction three with the 100% uh, bonus. So it means I have to delay this national focus a little bit. There's two ways of doing that. You could either do naval rearmament, which is gonna give three dockyards, which is gonna help us get even more submarines by the time the war starts. And it's actually perfect timing, 35 days, because we don't need to wait for 70 days to do that. Or we could do army innovation, which will help as well. And it's gonna make it a little bit faster afterwards to get the treaty with the USSR, which is gonna give us the armor tech 
technology that we need to get medium tanks researched faster. Remember that medium tanks is what most of our army is going to be composed of, at least most of our spearhead, as I like to call it, or our actual breakthrough units will be composed of. The drawback from this, of course, is also that uh, doing the four year plan one focus later means we're going to get less of an economy once the war starts, but it's not too much less, so we'll be fine. Don't worry. We're just fighting against the AI. This is not a multiplayer, boys. And the Sultanate of Aousa submitted to Italian demands, meaning we are going to be schnappel duped here because we got nobody defending that area. Oh boy, that is not good at all. Quickly strategically redeploy our units into the south. Or never mind, the Ethiopians actually walked all the way over there. Fair enough. Our intelligence agency has just finished building. We're going to do the cryptology department so we can actually start decrypting the uh, ciphers for the enemy nations. We'll follow that up with localized training centers so we can recruit the local agents from other countries, especially for the Soviets, the French, and the British. We really want to get some of their uh, double agents as a part of our nation, of course. And then afterwards, we can do passive defenses. Blueprint stealing is pretty good, too. And all of the other above intelligence agencies for the Army, civilian, naval, and Air Force departments. Take note, whenever you do a research for your uh, intelligence agency, you take away civilian factories from your economic output. So make sure you do a proper balance and you don't just completely research all of the uh, intelligence agencies from the beginning. You only need five researches to get the second agent, which is what you need to do the collaboration government in France. After you get five researches done, you can take a break until you get a better economy. Let's see who is selling what. Looks like the Japanese are selling some trucks and some convoys. Let's actually sell some stuff ourselves. I'm going to sell off my uh, Dornier Dose because I don't really care about my um, naval bombers. I'm not even going to build any naval bombers, let's face it. I'm going to sell all of them. That's going to give me economic capacity at 3,312. That is not bad. Set them up at a normal price, I guess, or a high price, 4,100. Nah, now nah, we'll be fine. Let's set them up at a normal price. There you go. Sell it. Now it is on the international market. So let's see if anybody wants to buy it. It's not a guarantee that someone's going to buy it off after all, right? Just hoping that the Japanese will since they're going to need naval bombers. You know what? I'm going to list some of my um, early interwar planes as well, but I'm going to put them up with a high price. Let's see if anyone's going to buy this. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to just test the field to see how interested people are in my tanks. If they are really interested in the basic uh, media. Oh, 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 hold up a second. Italy wants to buy eight of them and Peru wants to buy six. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Let's do it. We, we sold some of the planes. Okay. People really wanted to buy the planes. All right. Well, we know what we want to build more of now, don't we boys? Once we've gotten all of the infantry equipment needs met, we're going to be uh, pumping out a lot of our BF 109s and looks like we also need some more steel. So let's import some of that from the Swedes as well. Now you can see here the amount of civilian factories assigned to getting the economic capacity needed to pay for our equipment. Once they've paid for the equipment, we deliver the equipment. So it's not instant. It does take a little bit of while. And that's why I'm going to be setting up more stuff here. Let's see what else we could uh, get rid of that we don't really care about. How about these guys? 80 of these? They seem to be very interested in planes and I'm going to set this up to a high price. Let's see if anybody bites my uh, interwar planes. Looks like the Japanese want to get some. Not too many, unfortunately, but better than nothing. We can also get our very first uh, operative. I'm going to go for Otto Skorzeny. This guy is an absolute legend that pretty much all of YouTube knows about since there's been like a thousand YouTube videos on the dude. The second agent that we're going to get is going to be a local agent. So we're going to have to recruit somewhere else. The department has also been done. So uh, let's go ahead and decrypt the uh, cipher for the French and let's do localized training centers up next. We got 150 political power again. So we're going to assign Mr. Martin Borman as our first advisor. We want to get Borman as well as Rudolf Hess. So we get 30% political power gain. If we get these guys early on in the campaign, what happens is by 39, we fill up all of our cabinets and even have some PP to spare. Hey, we got our first trade for the uh, Mauser military industrial complex. <laughs> I keep forgetting to call them organizations. Now you do get a specific amount of uh, funds whenever you do finish researches. So that's why we got a ton of funds when we finished the uh, MG08 uh, research for the uh, Mauser. Now we need 1,600 to get this to level two or size two better yet. We have a few options here. Defense plus 3%, soft attack and reliability or hard attack and piercing. I have to say the hard attack and piercing bit is huge for our infantry equipment. But let's face it, in a single player, mostly it's going to be all about that soft attack, which is why I'm going to go 
Fasoft attack as my very first trait and then lead it down this line. I'm gonna do a hard attack later in the campaign when we actually do need hard attack against those uh, Soviet tanks. Alright, now we can also start construction too. Take note, I could also do dispersed industry 2 and then use the 100% bonus for dispersed industry 3 and construction 3. That would however mean that I would cancel the 4 year plan and go treaty with the USSR before 4 year plan. Obviously I would have done that if I wanted to do it before. I'm not gonna do it. I think that the 4 year plan is really good because you get Hjalmar shock and you can go down and get the re extra research slot a little bit faster. Treaty with USSR can definitely wait in my books. Hey we just got our first batch of construction cost from having sold uh, those planes over to Peru and having had them delivered of course as well. We have a lot of stuff listed here but nobody's buying I think because I'm uh, actually selling it a little bit too expensive so maybe I can lower the price a tiny bit. There you go just as fast as I lowered the price Peru again is trying to buy 35 of my uh, close air support interwar units I mean planes. When is the Spanish Civil War supposed to happen? I thought it was around July June or something isn't it? Why isn't it triggered yet? Come on Civil War happen already. I need that army experience. Hey look at that Japan also wants to buy some of my close air support now that I made it a little bit cheaper so let's check our market here we got two deals on the way to the Japanese and to the Peruvians Japan's got two civilian factories assigned to making that uh, economic capacity to pay me and they also want to buy my naval bombers sure you can have that Sweden now we can also get Mr. Hjalmar Schacht which is 75 political power to hire and he gives us infrastructure and civilian factory bonuses but take note once we do the demand the Sudetenland he disappears as historically he did get fired so uh, he's a, he's only temporary with us which is why he's 50% cheaper. Wait what? When did this happen? I didn't even get the notification the civil war started. Okay uh, it's uh it's my bad right there I didn't even realize the war started. Let's go ahead and send uh, Frieda Schulz's units and the volunteers the air volunteers so we can get that air experience and army experience. Now guys take note it is really important to uh, consider the Spanish civil war your way of just grinding up those generals and getting the army and air experience. I sent infantry divisions. I know that some people like to send panzer divisions. I don't like that because most of Spain is actually mountainous terrain or just rugged terrain and I don't have that much tanks to go around. Plus I plan on selling every single one of my tanks that I have because I will be building mediums that I'll be using in the war itself. Especially with the new international market people really want to buy those tanks and it's going to benefit us most by selling it rather than use any for ourselves. Actually, let me do that right now that I think about it. Let's change all of these units over here to infantry divisions So we get back all of those tanks that we can use for the international market. There you go We got 700 tanks that's gonna give us with the high price 6,000 construction. It's not too bad considering these are the panzer ones which are pretty much just useless Let's face it. We're essentially getting half of a civilian factory for those tanks, right? All right, our units arrived. Let's uh, Strategically redeploy them over in the north. So we take care of the little pocket in the Bilbao area reconnect Barcelona because it seems like we are losing this a little bit okay let's also improve relations with them since we want to send a military attache but it's not gonna allow us to send unless we get better relations with the Spaniards all right we literally just walked into Bilbao it looks like they didn't care about defending their only port I'm also gonna change my uh, BF 109 a little bit and I'm gonna add a secondary four times light machine guns this is going to increase the air attack by a lot it's gonna lower the agility a tiny bit it, and it's going to increase the weight and production cost by two, but it's still worth it though. Save this up, and we're going to be replacing the current production line with the BF 109B. We also need more rubber as consequence now, so we're going to import more of that from I don't know. All of these guys are going to be my enemy, so just whoever doesn't matter now. We can also give back this to the Swedes. We don't need the steel anymore. And let's say make 10 basic medium airframes. Oh, look at this guy! He's getting mountaineer, infantry leader, trickster, and urban assault specialist I am loving it I've increased the amount of artillery that we're getting in uh, anti-air because I'm gonna be changing my volunteers and I'm gonna be adding more artillery so it's gonna look a little bit like this I guess for now autarky's done that means we can do the uh, Herman Goering work uh, take note this has been slightly buffed because we get 35 units of train now that being said we're gonna need more trains when the war starts so I'm gonna set up a uh, civilian train uh, production line not just yet though we still have time before we can do it hey look Look at that they're accepting our attache now perfect Denmark offers a trade proposal okay this is from the new DLC I'm assuming that I didn't 
really play much with the northern countries i'll be honest I've, I've mostly just been having fun and defeating everybody left and right despite their new added buffs these bonuses are pretty good consumer goods factor 10 percent is that going to be like one factory let's check boom it is i guess one factor because it's not much i didn't lose even one factory less than one factory i guess then and we got this really awesome modifier too so i guess it wasn't too bad time for the second operative and we're gonna get mr Gennady kuznetsov which is totally not the most suspicious name ever <laughs> I, I mean who would even trust this guy really uh now he is gonna give us intel network strength gain factor plus 30 percent when operating in the soviet union as well as is gonna get less of a chance to get detected in the soviet union and a few other bonuses here and there you can get your uh, local agents we got 150 political power again so we're gonna switch over to the war economy this was possible because of today's sponsor no no it's not no it's uh it's possible because we got over 50 war support from sending that uh, attache over to the uh nationalist spaniards who right now are ruled by jose antonio primo de rivera who this man who this where my franco at boys where my franco at time to research the medium tanks now we have three separate tank companies when it comes to medium tank designs we got henschel man and daimler benz now you do have these standard bonus or debuffs for each of these when you hover over them so daimler benz gives research bonus plus 10 percent production cost minus three but it offers less armor and defense man doesn't give anything except the uh, research bonus and henschel again offers some debuffs but increases the max speed and it has less of a research bonus now take note each of these companies have separate different traits that they can uh, choose from and you get an idea that each of these have a specific theme behind them like daimler benz gives you altogether plus 15 production efficiency cap which is a huge freaking deal and their units are cheaper to build to get more armor and defense as you research stuff and more breakthrough their overall i'd say a little bit more well-rounded whilst man focuses on mainly breakthrough a lot of it as well as hard attack and henschel focuses on speed speed and i'm talking a lot of speed a little bit of breakthrough less fuel usage so it's all about what you personally prefer i like daimler benz personally because i want to build a lot of tanks doesn't matter that they got five percent less armor when i can just get back that armor from uh researching one of the uh, armor traits for daimler benz once I have the traits available. Also guys, I cannot stress this enough. Sell all of your old equipment. I basically gained like five civilian factories from just selling old equipment that wouldn't have made much of a difference anyway. And we literally just started this and I also forgot to turn on historical. So this snaps just happened. Oh boy, that is not Gucci. All right, time to make the volunteer Einstein is the best unit around. Actually, I'm gonna add the uh, cavalry recon detachment too whilst I'm at it. These boyos are the best that Germany has to offer right now so now the choice is do we get construction three or do we get dispersed industry three the main benefits of this is that we're going to get a lot more factory output production efficiency base and so on but construction three means that we're going to build stuff a lot faster and i'm all about that speed personally i would love to get all that built a little bit faster since it helps with the snowball so much more all right we got the first trade for the mesher smiths now fighter and carrier fighters get speed and agility and here they get speed and agility this is going to give us agility and speed whilst this is going to give us naval attack and range so of course we're going to go for agility and speed that means we're going to take the right hand advanced aerodynamics i'm planning to actually go down the middle to be fair because i'm going to get the production efficiency gain max speed and agility air attack agility and max speed again and range max speed and air attack that is definitely my go-to the first five traits when it comes to messerschmitts and we get this trade simply by building planes we didn't research anything just yet for planes we just built them i also love how whenever i'm capturing equipment from uh, the spanish theater i'm just selling it back and a lot of the times the italians are just gobbling up buying everything okay we just changed all of our cavalry units to infantry division that's because afterwards we need to do anschluss and we need to have 500,000 units in divisions that's enough by just changing over the uh, cavalry units to infantry divisions also it seems like uh, the ethiopian 
Ethiopians lost. I didn't pay attention too much. My units are back in transit, so I didn't lose the units. Both of them are okay. And we managed to almost get the full trade for that general too. Time to make Austria great again by making them a part of us. And let's get the new research. Now, we will be using this extra research here to get interwar artillery. The reason for this is that we need better cannons for whenever we start getting our medium tank chassis design going. In fact, I also need to research the anti tank pack over here. So we're going to have to go down those lines a little bit too. Speaking of, looks like we got level two for the Mauser company. And I'm going to go for the production efficiency gain, which leads to the mass rifle production trade after that I really want to get. This is pretty much a no-brainer. We want to get rapid fire for the extra soft attack plus 10% as well as hard attack and air attack. We also want mobile limbers for that matter for the extra 10% breakthrough. So uh, yeah, that, these are going to be the first two for Ryan Metal for sure. And we're also pushing in the Soviets here. If we're able to get a breakthrough and we take the province of uh, Kaspe, then we can uh, cut off half of the Republican army. So uh, what am I even doing there? Let's actually go around here. We're going to do our best to take Caspe. And just as I said that, <laughs> the Spanish broke away into another part. Oh boy. And I'm going to be getting the first land doctrine for delay, which offers 15 organization for my infantry, meaning these guys are going to be staying into the fight for a little bit longer. Mr. Schultz is also about to get his uh, infantry leader. And there you go. He did get it. That means we can also get infantry expert, which offers an extra 10% division attack for infantry divisions and he's super close with trickster as well which i really like one of the best traits one of the most underrated traits in my opinion bro seriously senationist republic of poland the democrats against the non-aligned does it make any difference just stay by yourself poland just be poland man <laughs> All of these units are veterans right now, which means we're getting a 75% modifier in combat, which is pretty good. Been grinding away at that one province for the past half an hour, and we win the war without us even getting that province. That that just feels wrong somehow. Ooh, look how fast we broke through that division, though. Holy schnapps, man. Finally, the Austrian people are unified with the greater German people, and we get um we get cores on all of that, of course. We get their units, we get their factories. So we got how many one two three four five six okay that's a lot of factories holy shit they actually been building a lot of civilian factories haven't they we went up to 81 civilian factories hot damn yes please <laughs> we're back in business boys we're definitely back in business now Let's make sure we convert all of the units from the Austrians to regular infantry divisions and assign them to the rest of the garrison force here. Now let's get the other 20 divisions and assign them around the Sudetenland because that's of course going to be our next goal. A historic day for the German people because it seems we got the Sudetenland. Now this means we have these provinces here as our core provinces. So that's what? 4 million population that we can use in our armies. Plus we got seven factories that's not too many factories better than nothing though right does mean we can go down the first vienna awards and then eventually we can fully occupy all of the czech lands we also managed to encircle one of these soviet units i'm gonna try and encircle the second one over here too so i can uh, wipe out two soviet tanks in the process a lot of the times the ai soviets send tanks over in the uh, spanish civil war which is good because tanks might perform well in the southern bits but if you get them in the northern or in the rugged mountain terrains you can easily crush them with your superior infantry units now let's make sure we uh set up this pocket here so the spanish or better yet the soviets cannot get away from us speaking of the spanish they want to buy some of our fighter planes sure why not come on boys we got three soviet divisions trapped in here it is time to crush them it is absolutely time to crush them and yes in case you're wondering kalmar Schacht is no longer with us he got fired after we got the sudetenland so uh we're losing a little bit on that construction speed for civilian factories but it is what it is we have started filling up our military staff and we also have started getting our officer core values done so we got right now bold attacker which offers 50 percent chance of getting plus one attack for generals whenever they level up and we also got flexible organization that offers division speed organization loss when moving and preferred tactic selection cost minus 15 for the navy we got 20 percent chance to get one attack submarine design cost and research speed because we will be 
mainly just building submarines. And for the Air Force, we got light, medium, and heavy aircraft research speed increase and fighter detection with air mission efficiency. The Special Forces has been added with the Arms Against Tyranny DLC. And whenever we get the extra army tradition, we will, of course, go down the Mountaineer path because we mainly just have Mountaineers. We might get Paratroopers. I'll be honest, guys, I feel like Paratroopers are super broken in this game, which is why I don't use them as much because it's just not fair. I could literally just use the Paratroopers, especially with the new tactics they get from that to win all the wars insanely fast. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'll still use them, but not as much as would probably be best to use them because it just makes the game too easy then. All right, well, looks like the Spanish have one. That is amazing. Time to get the first trade for the uh, tank company here. We want to reach down the improved tooling, which offers production cap, but that means we got to get all five of the previous traits before we get the improved tooling one. This one together with the hot rolled armor are really, really vital for our Daimler-Benz company. Now we do have our first medium tank chassis, but we don't have all of the research necessary to properly make a decent medium tank. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait until we get the treaty with the USSR, which is gonna be after the faith of Czechoslovakia, by the way, so that we can get the basic medium tank designs from uh, the Panzer three and four, and then we work upon those particular designs. We're gonna need more army experience so we can get some more by sending volunteers over to the Japanese theater. Five should be enough so let's get one more division from here assigned to this main five division. Actually these guys are already veterans. You know what? I'm gonna send a completely different five stack that are not yet already veterans and I'm gonna make Mr. Blaskowitz in charge of that since he already has 95% infantry leader. Make sure we send the air volunteers too and let's go. If we want to cheese it we could send more volunteers and extra five divisions to the Manchurians. Oh, this is just absolutely beautiful. We're getting for submarines surface visibility and overall sub visibility minus 5%. Just what we needed, guys. The faith of Czechoslovakia. We can set up a small Slovakian puppet state or we can just take the entirety of it for ourselves. Honestly, I'm just gonna take the whole thing for myself. I know Slovakia as a puppet state is not too bad, but truth is I don't care. Okay, I just don't care, right? Look at my face. I don't give a snaps. I want it all. I want I want it to be mine, all right? I want it. I want my name on the map. That's what this game is about, right? Having the biggest name on the map right now. Oh my lord, look at all that juicy Czechoslovak equipment we could potentially sell. Now, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm actually surprised that almost nobody bought my tanks. Looks like not many people are interested in the Panzer 1 basically really trash tanks. So, uh I might sell them for a little bit less low price on it. Give it a try again. With the world war basically one year and a half away, it's time that we change over our motorization level to the highest level, basically the uh, two trucks level. As, as it, it literally is a Nikon with two trucks. That's what I'm gonna call it. It's the two trucks level. Make sure you have all of your supply hubs set to this. It will help out with spreading supply around. This does mean it's gonna use a lot more trucks. So make sure you do have trucks available for your supply network not just for your army if you're not sure how the supply system works i got a guide explaining in detail the logistics of this game check it out in the description below since we also want to get a little bit of compliance and the check lands before the second world war starts we're setting over our overall territorial management to civilian oversight this is the easiest way to get compliance as you can see right now that increases compliance by roughly 0.1 percent per day it does does mean we're gonna get a little bit of uh, resistance though so we're gonna have to uh, do something about that first thing we can do is change to the cavalry brigade over here make sure these guys are the ones that are garrisoning these areas it's gonna cost us slightly less using these units they're not optimal though I kind of have to make a designated division template to use in occupied territories with the military police in it holy mother of pockets we just got 17 Chinese divisions divisions in here bro that is like a quarter of their freaking army right now another really crucial thing to do whenever you have extra army experience lying around is to assign military industrial complexes to your various equipment so for example the opal trucks now we can produce them with the uh, opal company and that's gonna give passive funds towards getting trades for opal should have done this a while back but honestly i was just kind of preserving my army experience for other stuff we reached the point where we have enough civilian factories we're gonna start building military factories and synthetic plants so we got around 116 uh, civilian factories right now let's say once we get to 130 civilian factories we start pumping 
building out proper amounts of uh, synthetic refineries and military factories. That's why we got Mr. Walter Funk over here who's giving us 10% extra military factory construction speed. All right, looks like we're going to be increasing collaboration in France by 45%. That is a massive deal right there. So let's do another one now. We saved up a little bit of power, political power, so we can get Heinz Guderian, which offers not only the discount for mobile warfare land doctrine, but also maximum speed for our tanks. Also, right now we're getting 1.9 political power per day, which is a significant improvement. Time to get our third doctrine here. We're going to go, of course, for the uh, Blitz Armored Spearhead, which is going to give our tanks more breakthrough and organization. We're getting a ton of army experience right now from the uh, Chinese war because we have 10 divisions over there ravaging the Chinese. So uh, by the time the Second World War is going to start, we're likely going to have at least one or two more doctrines finished. So it's going to be an absolute cakewalk going through Poland, France and the English lands. Here's another really cool thing we can do. Now we have one of our divisions here that distinguished itself in the uh, Spanish Civil War. Now what we can do is we can grant them a citation, which is going to cost us 30 political power, but it will give one of these four bonuses here, either breakthrough, supply consumption reduction, reconnaissance or division organization. Now I'm going to give them the division organization. It is going to be 30 PP, but I think it's worth it because this unit is going to be significantly better. We could also promote this guy and he can actually be one of our generals. I don't want to do that. I have enough generals as it is, even though he's going to get one of the following engineer officer or infantry officer, which is pretty good. But nope, nope. This guy is going to be in charge of the 18th infantry division, the chattiest of chads all around. The Soviets just accepted the German Soviet treaty. So now we got two times 100 research bonus for armor technology that we're going to use to get the improved medium tank chassis. And we also got some uh, medium variants already created. So that would be the Panzer IV and the Panzer III. Essentially, the Panzer IV is an anti infantry tank since it has a lot of soft attack and the Panzer III is an anti tank tank kind of it's not actually a tank destroyer but those were the concepts behind these two uh, behemoths here early behemoths we're gonna of course modify upon these we're not gonna just keep them as is to be more precise the Panzer IV was supposed to be an infantry support tank whilst the Panzer III was supposed to do the actual Panzer thing you know of fighting other Panzers and such so now we've done a few changes to the Panzer III and we're we're gonna save this up as this is gonna be what we're gonna be producing right now at least for the initial phase it is a-okay to have this particular design and then we'll change over to a better design once we research a better gun and a few other better attachments or modules whatever you want to call them this does mean we're gonna have to import quite a little bit of tungsten and steel from the Swedes as well as chromium from the Turks oh looks like the Japanese are in need of light tanks so I'm gonna put some more light tanks on the market in that case maybe they can buy all of the ones that I have January 1939 and we already have all of the advisors that we need for the war plus all of the uh, law changes only exception is we need one more military commander and the chief of the Navy obviously that's gonna be done in a month or two and we still have 1.45 political power per day so getting those two extra 15% boyos was totally worth it wasn't it I'm also arranging my armies just so I can get ready for the war and I can do my war plans as well I've got five Five armies of 24 divisions and the sixth one which is essentially going to be changed over to the medium tanks whenever I get enough medium tanks I also have to do the template for that so we got to save up a little bit of uh, our army experience we can use the uh, light tank template and just work upon this one essentially for now this is what it's going to look like I will change it afterwards this is my basic medium tanks division as of now and then after we get more army experience and better tanks and everything else we change it around like of course I want to have rocket artillery in it and so on right we're setting up our uh, battle plans too and we're making sure that our units are ready to go i don't want to do this last minute and then just forget some vital information and i'll be really really pissed afterwards if i do all right that should be it we've got pretty much everything covered except the north actually i forgot about the north we can say get two units over here why not we're gonna make a duplicate of the volunteerenstein and give them a proper german name of course that is obviously the schnitzel cloppers in case you didn't know that is the accurate name of uh, World War II elite German soldiers. Okay, just trust me. Holy mother of God, the Swedes just put on the international market a ton of equipment. What? Uh, I feel like Sweden might have way more equipment than it should, sir. Excuse me. 
But yeah, I'm not complaining. I need support equipment, for example. So I'm just gonna buy all of this. Even Venezuela is able to give us some support equipment. I am super down for that, obviously. And it looks like the Japanese, again, are buying light tanks. Thank you for me helping me get rid of all those light tanks I had. <laughs> and yet another collaboration government's been done. But one of our agents got captured, so that sucks, PP. Now we have to actually get him back. This man right here is an absolute beast. I mean, Francesco De Martini's got Syrian, Ethiopian, and Italian nationality. He's a commando, linguist, and demolition expert. Holy mother, dude. All right, looks like Iron Wolf Lithuania folded, and we got our Memel province back. This is an occupied state. That's kind of annoying. This used to be a proper core before, so I don't know what happened with that, but it's not cool, bro. I do believe we can squeeze in one more national focus before we do Danzig or War. So we're gonna do air innovation so we get a little bit of a boost with our air force and I'm not accepting at least call to arms against the Ethiopians Which they already defeated because then I lose my beloved mefo bills when you go to war You lose the mefo bills and these give me huge bonuses like military factories plus 25 construction speed and so on It is absolutely vital that we keep this for now Okay, so I am paused and it seems like this is a core province now So I guess it was just an occupied province at first until the event showed me that it's a core I don't know. I've also changed half of my army here under Fedor von Boch into the Alpenjägers. Now these guys have a brand new outfit here and if you look at the template we got all the support companies and we extended the amount of mountaineers in these units. This way these guys are gonna do their best in the mountainous rugged terrains of the Carpathian Mountains. Wait what? Why the hell is free India in the Axis? What? Uh okay that's bad. That is really really bad. That means I'm gonna go to war with the allies a lot faster now. Ooh, I am so not ready to go to the war with the allies yet, bro. All right, well, we can change three panzer divisions to the uh, medium panzers. Not even gonna be enough to fill three of them, actually. Only two of them we can do for now. Those last few months before the war starts is absolutely crucial that we get those done. So we get as many military factories as we possibly can. At least 100 military factories before the war begins, you know? Surprisingly, though, it doesn't look like they are at war with, uh, with the English. Just the other Indians. That's it. We just unlocked the improved medium tank chassis and we're gonna do the Panzer 5s here a little bit better than the uh, Panzer 3s that we have right now. Well, actually a lot better than the Panzer 3s that we have right now to be fair. And they will for sure make a big impact on the battlefield. Oh man, I really want to join on the Indian side, but I need those military factories. I cannot just yet, man. Come on. <laughs> Give me some time here. And yeah, they're fighting the British already. That is really, really not Gucci. Or not. They're not fighting the British. The British just happen to have units it's here and they haven't declared the war. What the hell is going on there, man? It is September. We could delay this a little bit longer, but it's fine. Let's just go to war. We've had enough years to prepare and I think we've got a pretty strong situation, pretty strong country to take on the allies. And we got the improved small airframe. So let's do the Foca Wolf 190 with the uh, best modules available to us. Of course, that's going to be a four times heavy machine guns times two. So we get 25 air attack. Hell, you know what? Let's get a third. 37 air attack, so we got 16, no, 12 heavy machine guns in this beast. Let's go with uh, one engine times two, and that's it. Not gonna get anything else. This is actually much better than the uh, current uh, BF-109 design, so we're gonna have to replace our BF-109s with these way better and improved Foco Wolf 190s now. Look at that difference. We got more speed, more range, more attack, more agility, more basically everything, and just for the cost of five extra production so it's really worth it wait what the hell just happened the americans took two states from the mexicans what 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 <laughs> Uh, okay. Iron Wolf Lithuania wants to join the Axis. Don't mind if I do. Hell, that's like a good 12 divisions they're bringing into the fray, aren't, isn't it? Looks like the Poles refuse to give me Danzig, which means we're gonna be declaring our war on them and our spearhead units are ready here. We also uh, modified our template a little bit, so we got a little bit more of an oomph with added artillery and anti-air. Speaking of anti-air, let's make sure that all of our planes are directed over Poland, as that's gonna be where our main assault's gonna be at. 
and let's also uh, deploy the rest of these planes and the transport planes because we're gonna need some air supply at the start of the war also have to say I made a little bit of a blunder by not actually building more planes I forgot to add an extra 10 lines of uh, planes so I'm gonna have to use the first two three months to catch up with the plane production I guess after capitulating the poles and yes in case you're wondering we can just walk into Gdansk because it's a demilitarized zone so that means there's no troops in there once we declare our war I'm also going to do the German Swedish agreement so I can get the control of uh, all the resources in Vasterboten or so I can get the rights to the resources in Vasterboten this is the only new uh, national focus added to the Germans with the new update but hey it's better than nothing right considering they nerfed them a lot by removing 200 steel from Germany all right Right, now take note we're gonna call in all of our allies and the allies also have the Danes on their side so we got to be careful on the northern flank also now which means we got to bring some more units there it looks like uh, two units is not gonna be enough is it nope not enough at all we can also use some of these here to get a little bit more war support as well as more stability I'm gonna do improve workers condition stability is absolutely vital for me in this uh, early phase let's see how the Danes cope with us pushing a little bit in their lands too i swear this looks just like a uh, modern painting doesn't it i'm gonna call it poland is refusing to collapse <laughs> they've also bunkered down in warsaw so i have to uh, double down on my efforts now i guess hey the swedes accepted our deal hell yeah we got all the Vaster Boten resources now tungsten steel and chromium come on we're about to take Warsaw boys that ya go and there you have it the Poles have capitulado now we can actually uh, get ready for the proper second world war or better yet world war we also need to help our Italians friendos because it seems like the French actually managed to advance quite a little bit into their land so uh, yeah we got to help and get that back it's also quickly take care of the Danes so we don't need to worry about our northern flank before we push into the French Should be a fairly easy affair here because you know Denmark's got like schnapple doop troopers so you right Denmark for choosing the wrong side <laughs> now we did all we could in the southern bits over in Italy but it's time for us to actually start the war against the Belgians and our tanks hopefully will roll through this and get a breach in the north and then we can just bypass the Maginot as historically the Germans did all right we got the Soviet German trade agreement which did help out the Germans in the war in the early bit before they did declared war on the Soviets and it's gonna help us out as well hopefully it's also continue to push in here and we got Luxembourg which had 37 civilian that's a lot of freaking civilian trains right there and there you have it boys we just went around the Maginot now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flood in behind them and I'm also gonna use my motorized units to rush for Paris and capitulate France sooner rather than later oh no you're not gonna escape from me Francius bruh no shot I'm actually gonna take Paris like this this is the most most derpiest thing ever like actually the most derpiest thing ever <laughs> Bro, if I take Paris like this, I'm actually gonna be super impressed with this. Not surprised, but impressed for sure. And I just took Paris. Okay. How far away are the French from capitulating? Halfway there. We need to take a couple more victory points, I guess. Wait, what? Triumphant French. What? I didn't even... They didn't even... Cap what? Uh, uh... Okay. What the hell, man? This makes no freaking sense to me. They haven't even capitulated yet. Why did I... Is this bugged? By the way, I am using the early access version in case you guys didn't realize. So there might be some things that don't make sense. And okay, looks like now the entirety of France capitulated. And that's gonna fuck up my uh, my French, my German France, isn't it? Yep, it will. Now I'm gonna struggle a little bit more, aren't I? A little bit messed up because of the early access. But by the time this is released, the release version is gonna be 100% okay. Don't worry about it, guys. All right, next step is to clean up the uh, Americans that have uh, landed into Europe because the Americans have joined the Allies a lot faster than they normally should. Let's see if we can capitulate the Belgians before they manage to uh, get over to the coastline or at least if we can take the coastline so their Allies cannot reinforce them. Pretty confident we can do this. Pretty pr Oh, nope. They got some reinforcements there. All right, well, let's go into Kurtrick or whatever this is called and then Brussels. We got Brussels. I think that might be enough. Let's see. Lay down your arms. We will not hurt you much. Nope. We will hurt you. We're gonna hurt you a lot. All right. Let's hurt what's left of their units here now. Looks like the Americans are trying to uh, have a little bit of a last holdout here. 
<laughs> in what's left of France, but we cannot allow that, boys. Obviously, we're going to be attacking the uh, the Dutch too here. Let's go ahead and uh, take him out. Shouldn't be much of an issue. Wait, what? The Norwegians want tanks? So that means the Norwegians are going a fascistus. Maybe I'm not sure. They changed the. They, oh, okay, that's beautiful. I like them. I like this flag a lot more than the ad other one, honestly. We still have some holdouts here that are pissing me off because for some reason they're really holding out properly, man. And we also finally have enough medium tanks to get 10 medium tank divisions just uh, six months late because we didn't manage our factories properly. But now we got 200 civilians and we got 152 military, so we're doing pretty A-OK. -okay. Wait, what? What the hell, man? Why did Sweden join the freaking allies? Oh god, this is so bad. This is gonna completely destroy me now because most of my imports are from Sweden. Uh, wait, what? Norway joined my factory? Bro. And why am I still gaining the, the resources from Vasterbotten even though I'm at war with the Swedes? Like a big, big bro, bro. And now the Norwegians are in my war against the... Okay, let's ship on over our boys from here. Yep, that's right. All of you guys. I was literally about to get ready to invade the English and this happened. I mean, things are very interesting. Hey, finally we got the best nation to join us now. The Romanians are here. The most trustworthy of our allies. And bravest of all, too. All right, Norway. Time for you to join, too. Let's go. Let's Gucci, boys. Let's Gucci, Smaguji. Come on, join. I want to attack. I want to attack, I say. Can you, like, actually join my war, for fuck's sake, Norway? Looks like the Sveds are helping the Duns, though, which is a bit of an issue. It's pissing me off, but we should still be able to get Copenhagen. There you go. All right, got Denmark. Now let's capitulate the Swedes, too. Freaking Norwegians are not joining against the Swedes for some reason, which is kind of upsetting me. Is Yugoslavia going to accept it, or are they not going to accept it? That is the question now. Come on, give me your Slovenia. I need your Slovenia, brother. Oh, no, they already said no. I got Yo Yugoslavia. Okay, yeah, okay. Never mind. Sweden, surprisingly easy to take, though. Like, their units are paper boys, bro. Holy shit. They have no attack and defense, do they? What is this guy? General Falke Hogberg, commando skirmisher. Mm, okay, sure thing, bro. Sure thing. If you say so, I trust you. We're gonna make a mad dash line for all of their capture points and for the city of Stockholm. Oh, finally, finally let's go <laughs> Norway decided to join against their uh, arch enemy Shvidon okay time to teach the Yugoslavians a lesson on why they should give me Slovenia oh we destroyed the USS Arkansas and 10 of their convoys with units oh I love this so much even more eight destroyers and one light cruiser and 20 more what okay Italy's doing an amazing job right here okay Stockholm's ours and the last holdout of the Schwedes is here, so we should be able to get this in no time now. Guys, I'll be honest with you, I'm totally creeped out by some sort of weird creature outside that makes this duck-like noise, but it's not a duck. I don't know what the hell it is, dude. Bro, the Turks just joined the Allies. Oh, God. Oh, come on. You really cannot hold out the Turks, Bulgaria. Now I have to help you too. This actually sucks because all of my chromium was coming from Turkey, so now I gotta take that so I don't lose the ability to make tanks essentially i'm gonna change the state serves the military with accomplished heritage because i'm gonna be granting a ton of medals in the war so for example this one here i'm gonna grant it's gonna cost only 18.75 political power to grant instead of uh, costing 30 to grant, right? Let's go ahead. Division organization. I think we already have the breakthrough. Yes, we do. We want to prioritize giving our breakthrough uh, upgrade for all of our tanks, of course, since the main purpose of the tank is the breakthrough, right? And then afterwards, organization and the rest to follow. And now let's see our bad boys here pushing through the Turks like a knife through butter. Oh, we managed to get some pockets in the process. Hell yeah. Oh no, you boys about to get encircled. <laughs> We also managed to get Panzer Expert, finally, for Mr. Rommel. Dude, Greece joined the Turkish side. This is zero realism, okay? <laughs> oh, okay. Alrighty, I'm loving this. I'm loving Venezuela and my faction. That is juicy. Because that's going to deny any sort of aluminium for the Dutch and the British once we take these provinces. Boys, if you enjoyed this video, leave that like so we can do the Italian run up next. And until the next time, check out my awesome Japan video. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support. 